For those of you who don't know me, I'm a lifelong resident of Massachusetts. I've graduated from the public school systems. I have two undergraduate degrees from state colleges and a doctorate's degree. I'm also a small business owner as a doctor of chiropractic. For as long as there have been political parties, we have been fighting against each other, divided into different sociological and economic factions by politicians and special interest groups. We must determine what really matters to you and your families. Instead of letting bungling, self-centered career politicians and their special interest groups divide us for their benefit. It is common sense principles that determine what's right and what's wrong. It is common sense principles that unite us against <laughs> untruthful politicians and their special interest groups that merely insult our intelligence. Our ancestors came to this country in pursuit of something they couldn't obtain anywhere else. Together, we form the greatest country history has ever seen. Within our borders, we enjoy freedoms others will never know. Freedoms others will give their life to obtain and freedoms others will die protecting. When nations are in turmoil or ravaged by natural disaster, the world looks to the American people for help. Our strength and our influence is felt around the world. Today, we watch in dismay as the state legislators ignore a 9.3% unemployment rate or more than 300,000 men and women are unemployed. We watch in disappointment as Congress ignores a 10% unemployment rate. Boston Globe last month reported that the Massachusetts unemployment rate will peak around 9.6% and the national unemployment rate will peak around 11%. And the real unemployment rate is around 17.3%. Every day, a neighbor, a colleague, a friend is laid off or hours are cut back. We watch in frustration as financial institutions, failing financial institutions, and corporate giants receive billions of our hard-earned dollars. And we're supposed to be consoled by, they're too big to fail. We ask what actions have led to these catastrophic consequences. Between 1991 and 1998, James A. Johnson was the CEO of Fannie Mae. He set a lofty goal of buying up $1 trillion worth of low-income mortgage loans. In 1992, Congress considered a proposal that would require Fannie Mae to, re to disclose their debt to the Securities and Exchange Commission, or the SEC. James A. Johnson opposed this proposal in a letter to the House Financial Services Committee Chairman, Representative Edward Markey who is the seventh congressional district representative. Shortly after that, Congress halted the measure. This action helped to trigger what is now the subprime mortgage crisis. James A. Johnson is reported to have received $21 million upon his departure from Fannie Mae. You and our families are stuck with a 10% unemployment rate and wondering whether we'll be able to provide for ourselves and our family's future. As your congressman, I'm all for protecting the environment, except when government policies, misguided politicians, and special, in in special interest groups are artificially inflating the cost of energy and placing unnecessary burdens on families already struggling to pay for high, higher energy fuel costs to get to work and to heat their homes. What really matters to you and your families? In June 2009, the U.S. House of Representatives passed a 1,000-page Waxman-Markey bill, or you probably know it by the cap-and-trade, 
Representative Markey has compared the increase in energy cost from a cap and trade to the price of a postage stamp a day, which is one, over $153 extra a year. A study released in August 2009 on the economic impact of the Waxman-Markey bill said between 2012 and 2030, gross domestic product in the United States or all the products produced in the United States and all those services provided will decrease between $2.2 trillion and $3.1 trillion and cost between $1.8 and $2.4 million jobs. In November, on November 22nd, 2009, the Boston Globe reported Alternative fuels are not boosting the state or New England's economies. The average effect on the, of the Waxman-Markey bill on Massachusetts between 2012 and 2035 is it will lower, excuse me, <clears throat> gross state product by $8 billion and by 2035 by almost $14 billion. It will reduce personal income by $3.2 billion and destroy almost 22,000 jobs and by 2035 almost 46,000 jobs. It will raise electricity prices by more than $556 and by 2035 by over $1,000. It will raise gasoline prices by more than 66 cents a gallon and by 2035 over $1.35 a gallon. March 31st, 2009, Representative Markey said, we will create jobs by the millions, save money by the billions, and unleash energy investment by the trillions. What really matters to you and your families? I know this is a lot of information. If I am right about any of this, will this affect you in your families will increased unemployment, increased taxes, increased energy costs affect you and your families? Is a strong economy, business incentives, job creation, health care choices, and lower energy prices going to benefit you and your families? Albert Einstein said, insanity is repeating the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. Today, you will make a difference and stop the insanity. The decisions made in Washington by Representative Edward Markey don't just affect the families of the 7th Congressional District. They affect the families and people across this nation. Today, I'm asking for your financial investment and, your, and for volunteers to help get the word out. If we don't stop the insanity, who will? Thank you very much for your time, and have a wonderful evening.